Bible Church. It is so good to be here this morning, and we are going to welcome in the presence of God as we gather together to worship him. Um, I just wanted to share with y'all a little bit. I've been uh, thinking a lot about the word abide recently, the last couple days. And so I always think of abide as living somewhere, you know, you live, you abide there. Um, but I looked it up just to see what the meaning was. And the first meaning was actually to, to accept and act in accordance with. And scripture tells us that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I was just thinking about that as um, living in accordance with um, what God sets before us, what he sets for us to do. And so, of course, that brought me to uh, Romans 8, where it talks about the Spirit of God um, working in us and um helping us to cry out to God as Abba Father um, and his spirit bearing witness with us that we are the children of God um, and also that the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So abiding with God is not just, you know, living with him, but it's accepting and walking in accordance to everything that he has for us. So that's really exciting. So this morning, I just invite you to abide with with God, to find out what he is speaking to you, and to walk in accordance with that. So let's stand to our feet and get ready to worship. Dear Lord, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for what you have for us this morning. I thank you for the ways that you're going to teach us to abide in you today. We just pray that your spirit would be here, that you would be glorified. We thank you for your presence in this place. And we just choose to turn our hearts and our attention and our focus to you and to begin to act in accordance or to continue to act in accordance with you and your spirit and what you're doing, Father. Have your way in us. Have your way in this place. In your name we pray. Amen. Take away, oh, you give and take away. My 
my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious name. storm is raging all around me. You are the peace that calms my troubled sea. When the cares of this world darken my day, you are the light that shines and shows me the way. For the beauty of your majesty On the cross you showed your love to me Beautiful Lord Awesome and mighty I'm captured by this love I
It's your mercy that has made me free. Beautiful Lord. So free, so free. Oh, how your mercy makes us free. Thank you, Lord. So there's nothing I can do to let you
more does he love you? How much more does he love you? How much more does he love you? How much more? Atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here. atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. Fear is changing now. For the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. The spirit of the Lord is here. Overflowing this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love.
God, oh fresh on us, we need your presence, your kingdom come, your will be done, here as in heaven, Spirit of God, fall fresh on
God, in this moment, we're in no rush. There's no better place for us to be. There's nothing more to look forward to than to be in your presence. And so we sit. We soak in your presence, in the presence of the God who's loved us enough to make us his own. God, 
you are so great. <laughs> Who else can say that despite the great distance between them and their God, that their God made a way? No one. You are the only God. And Lord, you, your, your, your grace is incredible. That we could be yours, that we could spend time with you, that we can sit here and wait with you in your presence, God. Lord, help us to remember the times before we knew you when the only thing that we had in the stillness was turmoil and pain and anxiety. But with you, Lord, with you, in the stillness, there's peace. There's acceptance and love. There's confidence in who we are because of who you are. And that is enough. Lord, help us to see it. Even as we're overwhelmed by your majesty and your presence, Lord, we know there's more. Help us to see it. There is none like you, God. Your glory so far exceeds our capacity to perceive and understand it, Lord. So give us more. Open our eyes to see you. Open our minds to comprehend your goodness. To believe you when you say that you are a good father who gives good gifts, who loves his children and will not give us a stone if we ask for bread or a snake if we ask for fish. Lord, help us to believe it. God, we have needs. And I'm grateful that you've already told us that if we bring them to you, that we'll receive. Lord, help us to believe it. As we wait here in your presence right now, help us to have faith in who you are. We don't have to believe that it can get better because it doesn't matter if it can or can't because you can do it. It doesn't matter if it's been the same thing forever. For 20 years, the same problems over and over again. It doesn't matter because God is bigger. God's been so much more constant than 20 years. And God, before we come and we ask for any of our specific needs, help us to believe who you are. Help us to trust that you love us enough to care that you will meet the needs the way that you've said that you will. I'm waiting on you. As your children who you love. And Lord, as I said, we do have needs and we bring them before you this morning. But God, I want to start by praying for the people who have suffered from various natural disasters around our world. Lord, the many thousands of people who are suffering from the earthquake in Morocco, in and around Morocco. God, we know that you love them every bit as you love us and that your heart breaks as their worlds collapse around them. So God, help them. Lord, help them to have hope. Help them to have peace. For those who are maybe still trapped, God, we pray for, for all the rescue workers that they would be able to do incredible work, Lord, miraculous work guided by your hands, for the medical professionals who are caring for people. God, I pray that you would guide their hands as well. And Lord, the same goes for those who have been displaced by hurricanes or various other things. God, we know here in Louisiana firsthand what it can be like to lose a home, to be displaced, 
to be living in someone else's house or someplace that's not home. Lord, for all of those who are displaced, Lord, help them to know that they may not be near home, but you are near to them. And that the things that seem constant in this world, like a house, like a neighborhood, pale in comparison to how constant you are. Lord, I pray. For those who have been, um, whose, whose faith has been shaken by things that they thought could never change, changing. Lord, I pray that you would increase their faith. God, I pray that as a church, a, flat, a worldwide church, that we would respond in exactly the way that you would have us respond. No more, no less, but your spirit guiding every step that we take. God, I pray that your love would flow out of this church, your body, to the people who are hurting around our world right now. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified through us, your humble servants, who have no good in and of ourselves, but who are clothed in your righteousness and your love. Lord, have your way. And God, I pray for those in our body who are sick or who are injured in some way. God, I pray your blessing right now, your healing hand, the hands that knit them together from the beginning, from before any, they were even a thought in anyone else's mind. Lord, you are working to make them into who they are. Lord, you know every cell in their body. So, Lord, I pray that you would do what only you can do. God, I pray that you would touch Kevin as he's injured himself. God, I pray that you would help it to heal quickly, Lord, that even now it could be resolved. God, I pray that you would ease any pain, that you would guide any, any medical care, whatever it may be. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, as, as is needed, as much as is needed, Lord, that you would give him wisdom and discipline to follow the doctor's orders, Lord. I know it can be hard. And God, I just pray that your hand would be all over him, that it would be just another testimony in his life of your goodness. Lord, I pray for my family right now, that you would be with them as they're sick at home. And Lord, for everyone else who would, who would, who, who yearns to be here this morning, or maybe they don't, Lord, but they're suffering from sickness and they're a part of our body, Lord. We, as their brothers and sisters, lift them to you right now. Because we believe that you can do it. And you will do it. So, Lord, I pray that you would touch the, the sick, the broken, those who are struggling mentally as well, with anxiety or loneliness or depression. God, you know it all. There's no surprises to you. So, God, I pray that you would be the, the, the God, the Father that you are, that we would see it clearly as you bind up the brokenhearted, heal our broken bodies. Lord, help us to trust you. We believe it, Lord. We want to believe more. Help us. Help us, Lord. that even amidst <laughs> all of our needs and all of our, our wants, our desires that we bring to you, Lord, that we have things to, to celebrate, to be grateful for. God, I'm grateful for this church. You have been so good to us by giving us Bethel each and every one of us, so blessed. <laughs> Lord, help us to see it. 
And uh, church, it's, uh, it's also a day that we want to take to honor grandparents today. Um, it's an uh, annual thing we can do to, to honor our grandparents, Grandparents Day. So um, I'm going to pray a special blessing on grandparents today. I know we've got a lot of grandparents here um, and uh, some watching online maybe. Um, so, so let's just uh, lift up uh, grandparents to the Lord. If you, if you want to lay a hand on someone nearby, um, by all means do. Lord, I'm so grateful for grandparents. God, what a gift. <laughs> what a gift to have grandparents in our lives, God. Some of us have had grandparents who have acted more as parents than our own parents had even. God, we're so grateful. Lord, I'm personally so grateful for my incredible grandparents. I'm so glad to have all of them still with me. God, I pray a blessing. Lord, God, I know uh, each and every grandparent's heart is after their grandkids and their kids more than anything else, more than their own needs. So I want to start by asking, Lord, that you would show yourself true in the lives of of the grandkids and the kids that are being prayed for day in and day out. Lord, for those who have wandered or those who are sick, whose grandparents are lifting them up, God, I pray that you would deliver, Lord, in the ways that you've said that you would. God, that you would bless the faithfulness of the praying grandparents and that that would bear fruit. Lord, I, I pray for health for our grandparents. I pray that the ailments and the woes that that come, that maybe are are, are there even now, Lord, that you would uh, that you would bring relief and deliverance from those things, and not just a temporary fix, Lord, but the kinds of things that only you can do—miraculous healing. We believe it, Lord. God, I pray for the minds and the hearts of, of grandparents, Lord, who maybe have some regrets. God, I pray that you would comfort and, 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 and give peace there as well. God, that your peace would guard their heart beyond understanding. And God, I just pray for relationships to be restored where they're not. Because, Lord, only you can do it. And we've seen you do it time and again. And so we wait on you. Come and do what only you can do. Lord, have your way in this service. Help us to have eyes to see you and ears to hear you. Have soft hearts to receive. Help us to put our will to the side so that you can do what you want to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. Just coming up with a word. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. All right. You know, I always enjoy our worship, don't you? It just is such a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit, and, and I just, I don't know about you, but I just really enjoy the time that we get to spend worshiping the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, next weekend is Back to Church Sunday, and I'm sure that uh, someone else will talk more about it later in the service, but let me just give you this, this plug this morning, and that is invite someone to Back to Church Sunday. Amen? And there's some invite cards on the seats. And here's what I'd like to see. When I walk out of this building this morning, I'd like to see all the cards gone. All right? So that means around you, you need to pick up more than one probably, right? All right? So I just encourage you to pick up two or three or four or five or six or how many ever and give those out this week and invite people. You know, you can go into the uh, Dollar General and give it to the cashier. It's not, they're not going to 
be mad at you, right? It's not going to hurt anything. You can, you can invite the, your mail carrier or, or whoever, the UPS driver or whatever. You can, anybody, right? You can invite them. It doesn't hurt. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to scream at you, you know, just for handing them a little card to invite them to church. So I encourage you to do that. And then also just be, be praying, too, that God will just bring people back to church and, and that we'll be open and warm and receptive and that we're not going to say, hey, where you've been and give them a, you know, give them a hard time. No, we're just going to welcome them back and say, it's great to see you. And uh, we're just going to worship the Lord and have a great Sunday next, next Sunday. And uh, so I encourage you to, to be praying and inviting. Amen. All right, we're going to look to the book of Psalm, uh, Psalms 37. Psalm 37, verses 1 through 4. I want to talk to you this morning about the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. Psalm 37. And there's a great promise in this passage, and we're going to look at it this morning. Psalm 37, beginning of verse 1, says, Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong, for like grass they soon fade away, like spring flowers they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word this morning, and I just pray, God, that, that you would speak to us clearly today, and Lord, we would receive your word, God, and we would allow it to change us and cause us to grow, Lord, and God, that uh, your desires would become our desires this morning. God, I just pray that you would guide our hearts and our minds and our thoughts right now as we look into your word. Just bless this time that we have. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So when you daydream about a trouble-free life, what do you wish for? What do you really, really want? What do you desire? You know, I think every kid dreams of being rich and having big piles of money. And come to think of it, a lot of adults have the same dream. Now, imagine what you could do if you won the lottery or found a hidden treasure, or became an instant billionaire. According to Forbes magazine, there are 2,153 billionaires in the world, and of those, 607 of them live right here in America. And none of them attend our church. <laughs> Two of those billionaires, Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, have more than $100 billion. That's a lot of money. I want you just to imagine for a moment that, oh, say Jeff or Bill, they just decided to give you, let's say, just 1% of their net worth, $1 billion, all right? $1 billion. Imagine what you could do with that much money. You know, the average uh, tuition cost of a private uh, college today is $36,000. With a, with a billion dollars, you could pay for 27,909 years of tuition, a full ride of four, four years for 6,977 students, right? You could take a vacation to space with 19 of your closest friends at a bargain price of 50 million each. You could buy a a venti iced coffee from Starbucks for almost every person in America. Yeah. Now, because we love you, we decided to buy you all coffee this week, too. You just go to the lobby, and you get coffee, right? Free coffee. It might not be Starbucks, but it's free, right? <laughs> With a billion dollars, you could buy an NBA team, say the New Orleans Pelicans, or maybe a, a major league baseball team, kind of, the Miami Marlins. Uh, with a billion dollars, you could buy Hall's Pond K, a private island in the Bahamas, and build a castle on it. Balmora Castle is only $140 million, and then you could build a runway on that private island for your private jet, and you could dock uh, on that private island your yacht, Here Comes the Sun, for $175 million, and buy the world's most expensive car to drive around your island. And the 1963 uh, uh, Ferrari GTO that sold for about $70 million a couple years ago. And you could still have about $220 million in pocket change. <laughs> now, it's fun to imagine, right? It, it's, in fact, just, just turn to the person next to you just for a second and, say, and just say, ask them, what's the first thing you would do if you were given a billion dollars? Go ahead. What would you do? <laughs> you know, 
I'll, I'll answer it for me. I, I'd love to do all kinds of things here at the church, right? A, a playground, a parking lot repairs, roof repairs, state-of-the-art tech, an LED wall. All right, all kinds of things I'd love to do. But if I had a billion dollars, forget about building, just taking one building. Let's do a whole new building, right? A whole incredible new campus, right? But only after I wrote my $100 million tithe check. <laughs> Others of you, I, I, maybe I got you thinking about, you know, got you started on thinking about that Lamborghini that you wanted. Or, or no doubt, maybe your desire for some motorcycle or jet ski or an ATV or, or maybe you ladies just purses and shoes or whatever. Or maybe watches or sports memorabilia. I don't know. Whatever you desire. Here, you, you, you hear all that and you think, well, I can't wait to hear this promise this morning. <laughs> Does all that stuff make you want a billion dollars so that you can just buy it all? A billion dollars is so out of reach, it's hard to even imagine, right? Forget a billion dollars. Say a million dollars. No, let's just even say a hundred thousand dollars would change your life. With that much money, you could pay off all your credit card debt. You could invest for the future. You could fix your roof, maybe even buy your dream house, pay for the kids' college, take some dream vacation. But it seems that no matter how much we have, it's never enough. That, that's human nature. We always want just a, just a little bit or even a lot more. And that quest fuels a lot of unhealthy and irrational behaviors. People looking for a quick way to make more, take shortcuts and ignore common sense. You know, I've, I've seen people, even in their retirement years, take unbelievable financial risk and make foolish investments because they were sold on a dream. It was going to be a big payday. They were going to have much, much more. And when, when it went bad... Sadly, they ended up with much, much less. The drive for more leads some people even to, to steal from their employers. Or it seems like it's a quick way to get ahead, but often it ends up in a quicker way to get fired or arrested. <laughs> I've seen people with unbelievable amounts of credit card debt, with families that have $150,000 in consumer debt. They're consumed with the idea of having more, but have no plan to pay for all that more. Their financial lives are a wreck, all because of the pursuit of more. I've watched young people chase business deals that had very little chance of success. From the outside looking in, failure was inevitable. They were consumed with the thought of more money, more freedom, more independence, more control, more, more, more. That drive for more. The desire for more is a trap. It's a never-ending quest. The problem with wanting more is that more is a moving target. In today's world, we, we don't have to, to wait very long for the target to move again. Things like annual upgrades and instant downloads and next day shipping not only expedite goods and services, they expedite our sense of unfulfillment. We'll never have enough. And when our drive for more fails and, and we discover we aren't going to get more, our other unhealthy behaviors begin to kick in. Feeling, feeling like we can never get enough leads to an attempt to find satisfaction in unhealthy relationships and addictions and compromise. And people leave God and, and cause problems in the church or leave the church because they, they, don't, they didn't get or won't get what they want. And in the midst of all that thinking and desire comes this passage of Scripture. And before we get to the promise itself in the passage, let me just set the stage here. Psalm 37 verse 1 says, do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. So we all know people who do wrong, but still seem to get ahead, right? We, we know them. We've, we've seen this happen. They, they've got money and position and stuff. And, and, and when, when they, what they deserve is judgment, at least in our opinion, right? It doesn't seem fair. David says, don't spend your time worrying about them. Because their day is coming. Like the grass, they, they will soon wither. Like plants, they will soon die away. For many years, Jeffrey Epstein was a, a, a child rapist and sex trafficker. And at the same time, he enjoyed a life of luxury, was friends with the rich and famous, lived in a Manhattan mansion worth $77 million. Epstein had properties in New Mexico and Paris and Palm Beach and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And, and that's the kind of thing that could cause us to question God's justice. How can, how can an evil man like that prosper while we struggle to pay our bills? Where's, where's the justice in that? So Jeffrey Epstein's world came crashing down when he was arrested on, uh, on sex trafficking charges. And in prison, uh, it's been written that Epstein was found injured and semi-conscious on the floor of his cell with marks on his neck. 
He, he then was put on a suicide watch, and authorities do not know if he tried to commit suicide, staged a suicide attempt, or was assaulted by another inmate. But later, on August 10th, 2019, Epstein was found dead in his cell, the victim of an apparent suicide. And that is the fate of evil men who don't trust Jesus, who don't turn to Jesus. Now, we don't rejoice in, in his death, no. It's, it's never a good thing when a sinner dies and goes to hell. At the same time, it's a powerful reminder don't be envious of the wicked, for their success only lasts for a season. If Jeffrey Epstein could talk to us now, he might say something like this. Notice, n- none, of, none of it is worth it. <laughs> I-, I missed it. My, my, my life was all about stuff and pleasure and satisfying my evil cravings. In the end, look what that got me. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Instead, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. So we may not have as much as old Jeffrey Epstein, but is anyone envious of him now? No, no one. Instead of worrying about evil men who seem to be getting away with it, Put this scripture, we need to put this scripture into action. Trust in the Lord. See, the opposite of worry is trust. We can rely on God with confidence. His word is true. God keeps his promises. Trusting God sets us free from jealousy and envy. God is in control. He makes all things right. In the words of David, we can dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. In other words, as as you trust God, he will take care of you. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I could not get away from this promise all week. I actually wanted to go a different direction, but, but every time I tried, the Holy Spirit kept bringing me back to Psalm 37. So I know there's something here for you this morning. This promise was with me all week. Are you ready for it? Here it is. The promise, now, now this promise has been abused and manipulated and misunderstood by many. In fact, this promise and the thought that it, that it didn't come to pass is why many people quit on God even. But we're going to take a close look and just discover what this promise really means. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me just say that again. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The dictionary definition of desire is to wish or long for, to crave, to want. So what do you desire? What do you desire this morning? What do you crave I heard about a lady who was asked this, what she craved, and she said, three things, silence, more silence, and still more silence. (laughs) You know, hey, I I, I crave dark chocolate caramel sea salt candy, uh, white chocolate mocha latte, uh, chocolate peanut butter pie, brownies with icing. I crave tacos, burritos, enchiladas, lasagna, right? But but this verse and, and promise is talking about much more than chocolate or tacos, that, that's just cravings of my hungry stomach. The desires of our heart are our deepest longings, what we most want and need, what we wish for and long for and pray for. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, people read that promise and they think, this is awesome. All I have to do is tell God everything I want and desire, and He's going to give it to me. I can't wait for my new Lamborghini. I can't wait for that beautiful, godly wife. God is going to give me a handsome, strong husband, an amazing big house, perfectly behaved kids, fancy vacations, a big bank account, all the stuff that we thought about today, trucks, motorcycles, watches, shoes, whatever, right? That's what I desire. God promised me the desires of my heart, so when is it coming? And like most uh, most of God's promises, this one comes with a condition, right? It comes with a condition. This is not God is a slot machine, put in a dollar, push the button, and get a God-sized jackpot of everything we want or dream. That's not what it's about. Instead, there is a condition, a prerequisite for the promise. Let me read, let me read this promise to you again, but let me put the emphasis in a different place. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, before God gives us the desires of our heart, we must first delight ourselves in the Lord. The dictionary definition of delight is a high degree of pleasure or enjoyment, joy, rapture, something that gives great pleasure. To delight in something means that person or thing or activity gives us great pleasure. It makes us happy. We look forward to it. We, we treasure it. All right? Some of you, you, you enjoy, uh, you know, you delight in deer hunting, <laughs> 
For others, you, it, it's reading or relaxing in a hot bath. Some of you delight in family time or taking vacations or watching sports or playing sports or, or work. Some of you delight in position and achievement and advancement. Others of you delight in going to the lake or, or shopping or, or video games or, or movies or, or watching your investment account grow, whatever it might be. Those things bring you happiness. And, and when you are struggling or having a bad day, that's what picks you up. When things are going bad or, or life is, is getting too overwhelming and difficult, you have to go to the lake. You have to go play video games. You have to take a hot bath. That's what delights you. That is what you desire. I'm reminded of the words of David in another psalm, Psalm 27, when he says, One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. What we desire says a lot about us. It reveals more than just what we like to do. It reveals our heart. Jesus said, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And what we treasure is the core want and longings of our heart. What we desire shows what our heart delights in. That person, place, or thing, or activity is the delight of our heart. And we, we know the right answer, what we're supposed to desire, but what our heart really desires is revealed by how we spend our time and our money. And, and, and what we just can't wait to do. What drives us? Now look again at the promise. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So the key is, to this promise is the direction of our delight. The direction of our delight. I, I, is it toward those other things, or is it the Lord? See, God wants to be our treasure, the object and the direction of our delight. And when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he becomes our treasure. He becomes our heart's desire. We can't wait to spend time with the Lord. We long for his presence. When we're having a bad day, we can't wait to get a quiet place to just be with him. We love to pray and study God's word. That's, that's what we're doing in this service today, right? We're worshiping God. We can't wait to get to worship. Amen? Then, watch this. Here's what happens when we delight ourselves in the Lord, the desires of our heart, change you hear me when we delight ourselves in the lord the desires of our heart change see we'll, we'll never find lasting satisfaction in a from a car or a boat a, a vacation won't fill the longing in our soul a bigger house or bank account will never be enough no person or relationship can bring lasting fulfillment when we we, we are no longer driven by that when we, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, the desires of our heart is for more of Him, more of His glory, more of His presence, more of His power, more of His peace, more of Him, amen? If someone asks, what do you want more than anything else in this world? Our answer would be, I want more of Jesus. I just want more of Him, more time with Him, more of Jesus, more of what He has for me, amen? It reminds me of a, of a song, I think it's, pretty old one maybe some of you know it some of you don't but it was called i'd rather have jesus <laughs> listen to some of these words i'd rather have jesus than silver or gold i'd rather be 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 his than have riches untold i'd rather have jesus than houses or land i'd rather be led by his nail scarred hands than to be a king of the best domain or be held in sin's dread way i'd rather have jesus than anything this world affords today I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide things. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be a king of the best domain or be held in sin's dread way. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Hallelujah. I love that song. When we really grab onto this promise, that's what becomes the desire of our heart. Jesus and more of Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than anything else in this world. Then, in response to that desire, guess what we get? Can you guess? That's right. God gives us the desires of our heart. More of Him and more of His presence. Amen? You know, the, the world says it's all about us, right? It's all about us, the things that we desire 
should be focused on us. Our desires should bring us gain and credit, build our own name, build our brand, do whatever it takes to make our dreams and desires come true. Don't let anyone stand in our way, right? That's what the world says. We've watched people like that. Someone maybe that we work with or a family member or a friend, maybe a boss or a leader, whoever. They strive to reach the top and do whatever it takes to get there. Life's a competition they intend to win. They take instead of give. People are tools to accomplish their selfish desires. They are on a continual quest for more and better. And here's the little principle. When we delight in something other than the Lord, the desires of our heart become selfish. Hear me. When we delight in something other than the Lord, the desires of our heart become selfish. Delighting in the desire of the world turns our heart away from God. And suddenly what we desire doesn't line up with God's will or God's plan or God's call in our life. And when that happens, will God give us the desires of our heart? (laughs) Of course not, because we miss the condition on which the promise is based. The condition comes first. Delight yourself in the Lord. Then when you do that, right, when you delight yourself in the Lord, then he will give you the desires of your heart. To get the desires of our heart, we must we must first know the desires of God's heart, right? We have to know God's heart. Any any indication of our maturity as a follower of Jesus is the degree in which our desires match His desires. Amen? You know, I'm reminded of of something I read in a book called Strong in the Broken Places by Max Cleland. Listen to this. He said, I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. (laughs) So is the promise a trick? Does that mean God doesn't give us what we want? No, no, it's not a trick. It's an invitation to trust that the God who made us is faithful and good and that his plans for us are better than the plans that we have for ourselves. Amen? And I know this, is, this can be a real barrier for some of you this morning. Some of you have been stalled in your relationship with God because you've worried that if you choose to delight yourself in the Lord, if you choose to put your trust in Him, as the Scripture describes, you're giving up your dreams and hopes for the future. I get it. Deciding to, to trust the Lord can, can seem scary. But to move forward, we must come to a place where we recognize we can't take hold of what God has for us when we're holding on too tightly to our own desires. When our our heart is fixed on Him, when we delight in Jesus, the desires of our heart become more of Him. And guess what? We get just that, more of Him. And that gives us great joy and satisfaction. Think of it like like a cycle. We, we delight ourselves in the Lord. Our deepest longing is for Him. And when we do, He gives us the desires of our heart, more of Him. And that increases our delight. And in response, He gives us even more. Hallelujah. You say, will, will, will I find that, that spouse I'm looking for? Will, will God bless me with, with more money and more stuff? I don't know. <laughs> he might. God blesses us in response to our faithfulness and obedience. But that stuff will no longer be the driver of our desires. Instead, if that comes, it's extra. It's God doing more than we expect or desire. Right? Amen. Well, I want to just bring this to a close this morning. I know this has been been short, but this is my thought this morning, and that was it. (laughs) I want to leave you with the words of Charles Spurgeon. And, you know, he's... he's, he's, uh, a guy from the past, right? A while back. And so his, his English and the way he communicates things is a little different than we talk, so, but I think you're smart enough to figure out what he's saying, okay? So let me just tell you what he said, and, and, and you take it this morning. He says, Every name, attribute, word, or deed of Jehovah should be delightful to us 
and in meditating thereon, our soul should be as glad as in the epicure who feeds delicately with a profound relish for his dainties. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. A pleasant duty is here rewarded with another pleasure. Men who delight in God desire or ask for nothing but what will please God. Hence it is safe to give them carte blanche. Their will is subdued to God's will. And now they may have what they will. Our innermost desires are here meant, not our casual wishes. There are many things which nature might desire, which grace would never permit us to ask for. These deep, prayerful, asking desires are those to which the promise is made. Amen? So when our delight is completely in Him, God has a way of surprising us with His presence and with His blessings. Amen? And in a moment, I want to pray for us. And worship team, I, 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 think, I, I think I'd like you to do Jireh if you could, all right, because I think that's appropriate, because he, everything is in him, right? He's, he's the source and the supply, our desire. We don't need anything in, in this world but him, amen? He's the source and the supply. Now, I want to pray for us, and I'm not going to, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pray for that new Lamborghini or, or for you to win the Powerball, Powerball. <laughs> Uh, but, but that we will delight in the Lord and, and that we'll be blessed with more of his presence and his power and his glory in our lives. I want to I pray that the desire, desires of our hearts will be for more of Jesus and for more people to know him because of that. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet this morning and, and I wanna just, I'm just going to pray for you. And then after I pray, the worship team is going to lead us in this song. And I want us to just worship the Lord. And I want you just to tell God that you desire him. Amen? Because I think that's where it really starts. So telling God, Lord, I desire you. And if you say, well, I don't really desire God, then you say, Lord, forgive me for not desiring you. Help me to desire you. Amen? Help me to want more of you this morning. Amen? Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this wonderful promise, Lord, that if we will delight in you, that you will give us the desires of our heart, and those desires of our heart will be your desires because we love you, and we're close to you, and we're serving you, and we're living for you, God, and we want more of you in our life, more of your glory, more of your power, more of your strength, more of your will. God, I just pray this morning that every single one of us would desire you more than anything else in this world, Lord. God, basically that we would put you first. God, that our, that our heart's desire would be for you first, Lord. And God, I know that as we put you first, Lord, you will give us those desires, Lord, those things that, that you want for our lives, Lord, that you will cause good things to happen, that you will work things out in our lives, Lord, as we trust you and as we look to you. God, I pray if there are those in the room this morning that they, they really don't desire you, I pray, God, that, that even in that, you would just begin to turn their heart to you, Lord. And God, that they would begin to desire you. You would stir up a desire for more of you in their life, Lord. God, that they would be able to just trust you and cling to you and put you first, Lord. That you could do a work in their lives. I pray that all of us this morning could say, God, you are, you are Jireh. You are enough. You are more than enough, Lord. You are all that I need this morning, Lord. And God, I thank you for that, Lord. As we continue to worship, I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to work in us. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you worship the Lord this morning?
you've spoken I'm already loved more than I can imagine that is enough oh I'm already loved I'm already loved already chosen, already chosen. I know who I am I know what you've spoken already loved more than I could imagine and that is enough oh that is enough oh that is enough you are enough you are enough you are enough so thankful for the reminder that when we chase after things that are of the world or not really of you or not what you have for us it just leads to more problems Lord God Lord allow our pursuit of more to be about you because you're more than enough we thank you Lord God we thank you we praise you. We just bless your name. Family, let's just let's just praise him this morning. Lord, we glorify you, Lord God. We're so grateful. Thank you for being who you are, Lord Jesus. Thank you for taking care of us, Lord God. Thank you for knowing us, Lord God. You are worthy, 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 worthy. Glorify you, Lord God. Thank you. can be seated. I'm just going to remind you about Back to Church Sunday. Back to Church Sunday. So, Pastor already talked to you about taking the invites, right? No, Nobody's going to collect them, so you grab some, put them in your pocket, put them in your purse, put them in your wallet, put them under your hat, doesn't really matter. Just take them with you. 
and let's give them out because sometimes I know people get discouraged, right? We see the chairs, we see the empty chairs. Well, guess what, y'all? We're part of the solution. So let's make sure that we're part of the solution. Um, so invite, invite, invite. Pray, pray, pray. But the other thing we need from you is for you to sign up for um, bringing toppings. We're going to have a baked potato bar, which I'm excited about um, next week. But we need toppings. So sky's the limit. I don't know if you guys have ever had like a loaded baked potato. Oh, my goodness. Or like a chopped baked potato with brisket on it. Mm. Uh, okay, we're not going to talk about it. Um, but so there's certain toppings we've said. And then if you can think of something that you think would make a like a potato like just phenomenal, Put that down and sign, you know, sign up for that as well. So um, that's that's what we need for next week. So if you all could do that, that'd be great. It'll be it's out there on the like the bar over there. Um, but that's that. Uh, another good time we get to continue in our worship, right? Because we get to give to the Lord. And so some of you maybe have already done that because you already signed up. You know, text to give or you you give on um, mm, Tithely. Um, <laughs> but there are four ways that we can give. You can give in the foyer, and there's envelopes right in front of you. You can give by phone, you can give online, or you can text to give, like I said. But I'm going to pray for the offering, pray for our church, and pray for you guys, and then you're, you're free to go, okay? Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that we can give to you. We thank you that we can be faithful in the things that you have called us to do, and we want to do that, Lord God. We don't want to be bogged down by our circumstances, looking at the bank account, Lord God. But we want to trust that whatever it is that you say right off the top, right at the very beginning, that's what we give to you. Lord, we pray that you are glorified by our giving, Lord God, that we can be cheerful givers. And if we're having a hard time with that, Lord God, help us, Lord God, help our, our unbelief, help us to have that faith to trust you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. I just pray that you'll bless your people, Lord God. Remind us on a daily basis that more should be about pursuit of you. Help us to get our thinking in line, Lord God, and our desires to be about you and the things of you. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day.